So you're caring for someone with dementia or Alzheimer's disease and you dread asking them to do anything, whether that's getting out of bed in the morning, taking their meds, um, having a meal, going to an appointment, uh, brushing their hair, because um, you just feel like you're in a constant battle and you are losing. In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 uh, tips and tactics that really helped me. Um, and also, they all fit into just two steps, which you can easily remember to do every single time you need to ask them to do something that might be kind of a tricky thing. So I was 21 years old and my grandma was finally diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. and. Um, I sort of fell into the role of her full-time caregiver. So just before we jump in, I just want you to know that I relate to the frustration um, and the overwhelm that you are probably facing um, in this journey, that it's something that's new to you, and you know what? I'm gonna do my very best to offer you some solutions and some strategies to really help you um, with this. But just know that every single person is different. So something that might have helped my grandma may work wonders for the person that you're caring for, or you might need to kind of learn their language and try something a little different. So just through it all, I wanna ask two things of you. Number one is to have patience with that person that you're caring for and to rem remember who they really are underneath this disease that they're struggling with. Number two is to have grace for yourself, okay? You're new to this. Uh, this, is, this is new to you. You're doing your very best. You are enough. You're stronger than you think. There are better days ahead. And I promise you that you are not alone. All right? So just click this like button on this video if you are down with that. And, um, and with that said, let's jump in. Step number one is to prime the mood. All right, so to set yourself up for success, you really need to, um, to prime the mood. So number, tip number one is to get her on your side, to be her friend before you try to be her guide. Something I really needed to remember caring for my grandma was that I needed to remember who the real enemy is. You know, sometimes you feel like the battle is between you and that person that you're caring for, and it's constant friction and tension, and, and it's a battle. But the truth is, the battle, the real battle, is not between you and that person. It's between both of you and the disease that she's, she or he is struggling with. So remember who the real enemy is, and be careful you don't fight the wrong battle. All right? Tip number two is to never rush. So be sure to give yourself lots of time. If you've never been good at time management, this is your chance to learn. Okay, so you wanna never be rushed when you're asking someone for something. Um, I'm a horseback rider and I found that whenever I was rushing to get out to a lesson, a riding lesson or to a show with my horse, they would not get in the horse trailer because they sensed that I'm rushing even if I was really careful <laughs> to not rush. Um, the animals will sense that you're rushing and it's the same with the people around you and it's especially prevalent with someone who has dementia or Alzheimer's um, that if you are rushing they'll they'll feel it they'll sense it and it'll make it really difficult to get them to to be calm and ready to do whatever it is that you're asking them to do tip number three is to ask at the right time something I learned very quickly with my grandma is that she had a rule coffee first and I knew that if she hadn't had her coffee for the day I could not ask her to do anything it was just it was just asking for a fight so you really got to kind of learn the right time and the wrong time to ask for things and uh, I knew that if I wanted her to take her meds or to get dressed or to do anything um, I had to not ask before coffee so you'll kind of learn like at what points of the day they're more pliable and more ready to, to listen to you and, and when you should really avoid asking anything of them at all. Number four, play their favorite music. So this is actually a really good transition um, from number three, from asking at the right time. Um, playing a playlist of their favorite music is so powerful. You may think this is simple, but if you haven't done this, this is probably the most powerful thing um, and the greatest help with my grandma was always having a collection of her favorite music, whether I'm playing it on the piano, whether I'm singing it with her, um, or whether I'm just playing her a playlist. Music might be a really good idea to turn on some music in the morning for them before asking them to do anything. Engage them and affirm your love for them. So for my grandma, it really helped if I just, you know, took her hand, if I, if I held her hand, if I looked into her eyes, if I just told her how much I love her. Um, that actually went really far. Um, my grandma and I had this little thing where when, we would, when we'd start getting stressed about things, we'd just, I'd take her hand, I'd say, Grandma, I love you. And we'd look into each other's eyes and we'd have like this little head bump. We'd do a little head bump. We'd kind of giggle a little bit and it would kind of reset the mood. So um, engaging them uh, that way really was helpful. Um, also, 
my grandma had a nurse later on in her time when she was actually in a senior's home and the nurse uh, Paulina was her name would come in and she'd say it's me and my grandma would pl reply it's me and then they'd start singing this little song it's me oh lord standing in the need of prayer and uh and by the time Paulina and her had finished this little song, Grandma was happy and ready for whatever it was Paulina was gonna ask her to do. Tip number six is to radiate the mood that you would like to receive from her. So if you go into a room and you're kind of stressed and you're kind of grumpy and you're like, oh, I don't think she's gonna listen to me, um, and then you go and ask for something, she's naturally gonna wanna radiate the same mood that you're bringing into the room. So it really is your responsibility to come in with joy and um, with a little sense of humor and really be ready to bring the joy into the room. I know that's easier said than done and something that I discovered way too late, I wish I had figured this out much earlier in caring for her, was um, I had a funny little video of her on my, on my phone. And it was a sweet little video and it made me smile, it made me laugh, and it was a time earlier on when her and I were, um, it was one of my favorite memories with her. And I had it there on my phone and, and I found that when I really got frustrated and I got stressed and I got anxious, I could just, I could leave whatever I was trying to do with her, I could walk out of the room and I could just watch this little video. It was like 30 seconds, I'd watch it a couple times over and it would just help reset my mood so that I could come in ready to um, engage her and be joyful and kind of remembering who it is that I'm really serving. Um, because sometimes you, you go in and, and you forget that who you're serving is not the disease, it's, it's the person underneath that. Okay, so step number one was all about priming the mood. Step number two is about taking the lead. So there does come a point where you have to ask them to do something, right? So after you've got them kind of calm and collected and happy, you've set yourself up for success and now you can actually ask. So really focus on what she can do rather than attacking her for what she can't do. So if you see her putting on an outfit and it's just, it's way too hot for the, the summer day, um, rather than saying, oh, you can't wear that, that's too hot, let's get you changed into something else. Um, you can take a look at her and say, wow, you look lovely today. And uh, kind of go through your wardrobe and go, oh, I love this color on you. Would you prefer the peach blouse or maybe the rose blouse? Um, and kind of take her focus off on put it on new choices. Make a statement, don't ask a question. So um, you can be very kind with this. Uh, it was tricky for me to figure this out because I don't ever want to impose something on someone that they don't want. So I would ask questions like, well, um, do you think we can take your meds now, Grandma? And um, there's it, the, the answer was not always a resounding yes. Um, but but when I figured out that I could I could ask her, and not just ask her, but kind of tell her in a gentle way and say, uh, "Let's take your meds before we forget." And I just go get them. Would you rather take them with applesauce or water today? And let's get you dressed. Um, oh, let's let's brush your hair now. And, um, encourage her. Sometimes I would tell her I'm going to race her when it was time to get dressed and she'd go, oh, I can't get dressed. And I was like, yeah, me neither. I'll race you and then I could kind of work her up to go and, and get dressed. Give a couple of options. Maybe just two or three options tops. Um, not a whole bunch of options, but give her some options. Oh, would you prefer salmon or chicken for supper? Instead of asking, what do you want for supper? So give her a couple of options. Um, that way, she doesn't have to think too hard about, about sometimes I think they overwhelm themselves just thinking about things um, and it's easier if you can just give them something really simple that they can choose from. Lastly, give them something to look forward to after the activity that you'd like them to do. So it could be something like um, uh, something I'd use a lot was, okay, well, how about we go get dressed and then we can play that Scrabble game. And that gave her something, and my grandma loves Scrabble. So find something that they enjoy doing, that they can do after they do the thing that you need them to do. Um, another idea is, uh, oh, when we were going to a doctor's appointment, it was really hard to get her out of the door because she didn't want to go to the doctor's appointment. But what I could say is, um, yeah, we're gonna go into town, we're gonna go for your doctor's appointment, and then we can go for tea and pie at your favorite cafe. And that was what she could focus on to kind of give her the motivation to get out the door. So have something for her to look forward to after the thing that you're doing. So to summarize, step number one is to prime the mood. Step number two is to take the lead. And then step number three is really just to remember, don't fight the wrong battle. Make sure that you're for her, not against her. 
All right, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below which one of these tips maybe resonated most with you. Um, have you tried any of them? What really worked in your situation? And um, and share your own tips. Maybe there's something that you have that's, that's worked that I didn't mention here. Um, there are other caregivers watching this video and I'm sure they would appreciate uh, some of your insight as well. You may even be able to inspire them in their journey as a caregiver as well. So be sure to leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Um, also, be sure to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to this channel for more tips like this. All right, thank you for watching and I'll talk with you again in the next video.